Hey, it's Dr. Tommy Goranga. Namaste. Nityananda. So, when we talk about encouraging other people, helping other people, we have to know how to help other people, how to encourage people. If there's somebody on the street who's a drug addict, alcoholic, we give them money out of compassion to help them. Really, you know what, unwillingly committing violence to that person, they go and buy some drugs and further their suffering condition, their addiction, which has got them in that situation of being homeless in the first place. Because all their money is going on that thing. Um, so we're reinforcing somebody's uh, illusions and addictions then it may appear that we're encouraging people but we may be unknowingly committing violence I have an old friend he's like an RAF winch man and he has to go like um, rescue people out of the sea they go uh, he goes down the end of a wire out of a helicopter down into the sea and um, he said that when the people that are down there and the, they are like freaking out and grabbing onto him, pulling him in and endangering the crew of the helicopter as well as himself. So he said he just knocks them out and then just scoops them up unconscious and they take them up. And he said that the people are so shocked, they're in such a state of shock when they're in the sea that they never remember that he knocked them out anyway. But that's funny because it's a bit of a twist because it looks like, oh, that's so violent. But no, that's real uh, mercy. It's like real um, non-violence actually. It's like a compassion. So it's interesting how the paradigms, the, you know, what is... Um, positivity towards others and what is violence towards others that's an important question because it depends you know if you how you see yourself then you're going to project that onto everybody else if you see yourself as an animal then you will treat everybody else like an animal as well and you won't see anything bad about that pastime of the drowning man the drowning man a man went out to save him swam back holding the man's jacket the drowning man was still drowning but he'd come back with the guy's jacket instead of him and he was holding the jacket up just see just see what I've done for him and everyone was like you idiot he's still out there in the river drowning so according to the Vedas this represents this pastime this story is the jacket is this outer material body and the drowning man is actually the soul so when we perform some kind of aid work for somebody's body feeding people or doing some mundane charity then it appears that um, we're helping people. But unless you're actually saving the very person themselves, then it's as good as just rescuing their jacket out of the river. Just like somebody's hungry, I feed them, you know. But then I go away and they're hungry the next day. Teach people how to help themselves. Give them knowledge. Teach them how to um, s maintain and sustain. And to grow. Then you're really giving somebody something. Merely filling in the gaps is not going to help them. And then on a higher level. Giving people 
transcendental mantras is quite literally rearranging their karma. Because somebody may be in a bad situation this lifetime. You may put so much money into it that they're living opulently. But their karma is, if that's their karma, then next lifetime they'll be poverty stricken again because you never help them really remove their karma. And the only way that you can do that is by encouraging people to come in contact with transcendental mantras such as Nityananda, Gauranga, Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. If, if you're um, only dealing with people on the bodily platform then you're only really helping them like the guy that's saving the drowning man's jacket or giving the money to the drug addict. If you're still maintaining people's material wants then you're really entangling them further in material problems because as long as the spiritual self is chasing after material things then the false ego with this material body remains and this material body is the only source of suffering for the spiritual self. Spiritual self doesn't suffer. It only suffers when it identifies with this material body. Every bit of suffering that we experience is through the senses and the mind of this material body. So as long as we are catering to that, we're merely maintaining people's suffering situation. Although we may appear to be being positive, caring, compassionate, and we may truly be trying to be, but if we can't help ourselves, we don't know who the self is, we're not self-realized or striving to be, then we're only dealing with people in a superficial way and unwillingly committing violence towards them by helping them to maintain an illusory condition of suffering, material suffering. Dr. Tommy Goranga.